Hear that? That's the sound of freedom. The disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Surely I say unto you, Unless you have a change of heart, and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one little child like this in my name, receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Well, welcome back to the 365 mile journey with Jesus. Uh, we just got back in town uh, a few days ago from a week out in uh, Elkin, North Carolina. Did a lot of great hiking out there and I have a lot of footage. I can't wait to edit it and get it up and show you guys uh, some beautiful places exploring God's creation out there. A couple days ago, we went to see the movie, The Sound of Freedom. It was released on 4th of July, 2023. And when you see this video, it may or may not still be in theaters, but I would highly encourage you to see it. It was very impactful to me. It helped me understand uh, the sin that's going on right now in the world with regard to child trafficking. Uh, it's just, you know, I get out in the, in the woods here and I feel the peace of the Lord and I'd like to share that with you and the beauty of creation and, and just how peaceful and wonderful and joyful it is. And sometimes I forget that right now, as I film this and right now as you watch it, uh, there are literally millions of children that are in uh, child slavery right now uh, around the world. It's, it's a huge, huge problem. I did some research on my own. I discovered that 1.2 million children are trafficked every year. Can you imagine 1.2 million? And it is such a big business that it's approaching and maybe even exceeding the drug business. At $150 billion a year of profit for those who are, who are involved in trafficking children, most uh, of the child trafficking occurs from people that the child knows, people that the child trusts. Could be a family member, a family friend, could be a teacher from school. These people cleverly disguise, they build up trust in a child and then they exploit them. Child trafficking comes in many forms. Uh, the most obvious form is sexually exploiting the child. And uh, what they said in the movie, those who are involved in this realize that selling a pack of cocaine, a bag of cocaine is a one-time transaction. But if they can get a child they can exploit that child over and over and over again. They can force that child to commit sexual acts multiple times per day. And every time that child does, they're making money. It's not just that they're forced into being a prostitute. Sometimes children are sold to be a child soldier. They'd be forced to go fight a war. Uh, sometimes children um, are forced to work, like forced labor. And even worse, some children are used to, to harvest organs. Jesus, he loves children so much. It was just a precious gift. And uh, one time all the disciples were gathered around him and, and they were asking, you know, which is the greatest in the kingdom of God? And uh, they were expecting Jesus to say, Peter, you're the greatest, or, or John, you're the greatest uh, because you've done this or you've done that. Instead, Jesus called a little child to his side. The little child came over and uh, sat on Jesus' lap. And Jesus said that, Unless you become like one of these little children, you'll never see the kingdom of God. Jesus saw the innocence of a child and their childlike faith, their trust, trust in their parents, trust in their family. And uh, that's the kind of faith we're supposed to have, childlike faith. One that is just humble and uh, honors the Lord 
And it's not about what we can accomplish. It's about, <laughs> it's about just having faith in our Lord, childlike faith. And so, Lord Jesus just loves children. And uh, for that reason, our enemy hates children. The enemy is hard at work and he's after our children. He's after their souls. He's, after, he's trying to steal their joy and their happiness. He's trying to steal their life. The enemy knows that children are the most vulnerable. And uh, he has orchestrated this. And the Bible tells us that we're not really fighting flesh and blood, but there are spiritual powers at work behind the scenes. Many people today, they don't fear God anymore. Uh, they, uh, they fear what might happen to them if they get caught doing something. They, they fear uh, the world system of justice. But they don't really think about <laughs> what's going to happen when they stand before God someday. And uh, Jesus tried to give us a warning about this. If we offend a little child and cause them to sin, that it would be better for us if we were, if a, if a millstone, <laughs> can you imagine a millstone being tied around your neck? Say you're out in a, in a boat and they tie a millstone, a heavy millstone around your neck. They throw the millstone into the sea and it drags you down deeper and deeper. Your, your drums would explode in no time and you'd be screaming out and sucking in water and drowning and going deeper and deeper and colder and colder and darker and darker. What a horrible way to die. But Jesus uses that illustration to say, it'd be better for you if that happened versus what's gonna happen when you stand before God. I mean, that's a serious, serious thing to lead a child to sin and to force them to sin and to lead them away from the truth and into sin is a serious offense and our Lord has warned us about it. Dear Lord, that movie uh, really opened my eyes to seeing what's going on in the world and the extent of evil, that they would take your most precious creation, the children, and exploit them in that way. It's just unimaginable that right now, as I walk through this peaceful place, right now, as I look at your beautiful creation, Lord, there are children right now crying, being abused, suffering, feeling hopeless and lost, and uh, being forced into doing things that no child should have to see or witness. And in the movie, Lord, which is supposed to be based on a true story, uh, this one man who was a former drug lord, he was a former uh, offender, and he went to prison, and he got back out of prison, and he went right back into his sinful lifestyle again. And uh, he had prostitutes and he partied and he just spent his money uh, on, on frivolous things. Uh, but Lord, he says that one day uh, he saw a girl that appeared to be 20 or 25. And uh, he paid to have her come to his room uh, and uh, have sex with him. And he had done it many times before. But he said as she was getting dressed, she took the money and smiled and as she was getting dressed. And he noticed her toenails were painted with cute little design. I forget what it was now, but, but Lord, uh, you realize, how old is this girl? And it comes to find out that this girl was 14 years old and that she had been doing this since she was like six years old. That's all she knew. He said when he looked into her eyes, all he saw was darkness. And then he realized that it was him that was the darkness. And uh, it was just a heavy conviction came over him. And he said in his testimony that he then took a gun and aimed at his head. He said, I am so dark, I need to stop this darkness. And he was gonna shoot himself. But right before he pulled the trigger, he said, if there's ever a good time to find out if God is real, this is it. And he asked you, Lord, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. And you did in a strong, strong way. And he didn't kill himself that day. In fact, you gave him marching orders. You let him use his influence, to change direction, to change course, and to rescue children and to help rescue children from this terrible situation. So Lord, he recognized his sin and he repented and came back to you and served you and was obedient to you. And he said, when the Lord tells you to do something, you don't ask questions, you just do it. And so Lord, there is hope for those who are stuck in this sin. And so Lord, I just pray for those right now who may be bound by this that they would do like this man did. Call upon your name, Lord, and have you bring them from darkness to light. 
and have you give them a marching order and a mission and a purpose that you can turn around what was meant to be destructive into something constructive. That the only solution to this problem is that people be transformed by your spirit, that they pledge their allegiance to you and make you their Lord and Savior, and that they repent and be cleansed of their past sins, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and live a new life a brand, as a brand new creation and head in a different direction. It almost seems hopeless at this point because there's just so much of this going on. But it all starts with one person. One person turning their life back to God like that drug dealer did. And it can be a chain reaction. And that's what I pray for, Lord. And how people can be transformed by your love and by your power and change direction. Well, thank you for watching today. And I hope you found this video to be an eye-opener. Uh, I ask you to please take the time to go watch The Sound of Freedom. Uh, at the end of this video, in the little corner, I will put up the trailer that you can just click on and watch the movie trailer to see to see what it's all about. Uh, I encourage you to, to donate to that movie if you can, to support it in any way, because it is helping to get the word out. And uh, just be aware and pray for those spiritual strongholds to come down and for the light of Christ to shine through. So thank you for watching. I will see you on the next episode where I'm going to be showing you some beautiful places that we experienced out in Elkin, North Carolina, and I hope you enjoy the, the peace and the presence of the Lord in those videos. Until then, have a great and blessed day.